We know very little about the Earth's inaccessible interior. The thickness of the skin on an apple is representative of the thickness of the crust that we live on. The deepest hole that's ever been drilled into the Earth's crust is 10 kilometers or so deep. We probably know more about the surface of Mars than we do about the Earth's interior. I'm trying to ask big questions about where the Earth's water came from. I was fairly convinced that the Earth's water originally came from comets. But one of the reasons we study rocks is because they allow us to peer back in time deep in the transition zone at depths of around five or 600 kilometers, the mineral ringwoodite is stabilized. I tried to synthesize these transition zone minerals without water, and I found that I couldn't do it. We also found that ringwoodite can contain several weight percent of H2O, that is tens of thousands of parts per million. This is 10 times as much water that we previously thought the mantle could contain. This is when my conviction began to change and I began to firmly believe that there was a significant reservoir of H2O in the Earth's mantle. I had a pretty hard time convincing others. Many people believed that I was working with much too much water in the Ringwoodite. Truthfully, it is a challenge to stop thinking about these things and it becomes more and more difficult to find time to stop and think and really explore. Although I'm often alone in my head in this journey, I'm certainly not alone on this path of wanting to understand our planet better. This story has changed a lot in this year. Brandon Schmant, a seismologist, approached me. And Brandon had been working on seismic data recorded by NSF's U.S. Array. This is a network of about 2,000 seismometers spread out across the United States. Underneath most of the regions beneath the United States, we found evidence for partial melt. One of the only ways of explaining melt generation at these depths is the presence of water. The other key event that occurred this year was a colleague of mine, Graham Pearson, discovered a diamond. And inside of that diamond, he found a small crystal of ringwoodite. But this ringwoodite was a natural one. It had come out of the earth millions of years ago in a volcanic eruption. It contained around one, one and a half weight percent H2O. And that's exactly about as much water as we're able to put in ringwoodite in the laboratory. When I first heard about this, I was obviously very excited because it had justified many of the experiments that I had been doing over the past couple of decades. Thinking about the fact that you may be the first person to see something for the first time. It doesn't happen very often, but when it does, it's thrilling. The desire to just see what might happen is in all of us from, from being a child and exploring our world. You know, what's gonna happen if I poke this? What I think is so amazing is how we're still making major discoveries about the Earth, about our very own planet, like this in the year 2014.